with six interceptions, yeah. I think, in 85. And actually, the, the two-point conversion was an interception, but it wasn't counted as one. Right. But my point is, ball wasn't flying around a ton back then. I mean, it wasn't three yards in a cloud of dust, but in the, even in the mid-'80s, it was nothing like they're throwing it today. Your, your numbers have been a little higher than that this, this day and age. What, Especially if I had Derek Thomas rushing the end. Yeah, that would help. <laughs> That's right. Pete, look, and y'all are all great players, every one of you, and you made your teammates so much better. But, Chris, isn't that the element that gets lost in a sport like football is that if you're weak anywhere, you great players may be able to help make it better, but it's going to be exposed at some point, isn't it, if you don't have 11 that can do everything that's asked of them? Oh, no question. I mean, there's no question, especially in today's environment where they're spreading you out. And I look out there today and I'm trying to figure out who would I cover? Because unless they're running a tight end or a fullback out there for a, a blitz, I'm always worried about who I'm going to cover if I was playing. But, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we obviously at Alabama played with great players. Like, I got a chance to play with Antonio and the ability to go into a game and make it 10 versus 10 as opposed to 11 versus 11 just changes the whole concept because you could take a, a guy like Antonio and say, you've got him. And so now the, the field is shrunk in, in third by a third. Right. And so that allows us to do so much. But the, gosh, there were so many great players that uh, I'm sure we all speak got a chance to play with. But without question, uh, you're going to get exposed. But really, you're not going to get exposed on Saturday. You're going to get exposed during practice, uh, during the drills, and so forth. Because there were so many talented players out there that we played with that uh, there's nowhere to hide. Antonio, I know wherever Andrew Zal goes as a head coach, you get drug along <laughs> to, to, to work with the DBs. How tough is it for you? as good a player as you were and having played at the absolute highest level to really teach guys the, mo the majority of which are never going to play at any level of college because you got to put it on terms they can adapt to I understand fundamentals are fundamentals but still there are things that came so natural to you or that you had developed these skills over the years it's got to be tough and kind of frustrating to get that out of them, isn't it? Well, honestly, it's not because for the kids, when you you have credibility with them, they they listen and they and they dig in and they want to they want to pick your brain and they want to learn everything that you know and you understand something. The tough part is trying to tell a kid he doesn't have it, right? right. He thinks he does, yeah. and you know, and he wants to tell you how to do the drills, how the drills should go, and you want to tell him I'm eventually going to move you, so <laughs> but you can't, so it is. It's fun, and once you have credibility with them, they they listen and, and, and they work hard. The kids, they work very hard, and sometimes you have to learn to, to tweak things with them, and I, sometimes I want to get to the point where I want to teach them how we played in college and in the NFL, but you have to realize they're not ready for all that, so you have to keep it keep it simple and, and, and just teach them. You, the one thing as a coach with high school kids you have to do is teach, 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 and I learned early on yelling is not the answer. They're going to tune out in a hurry. They will tune you out in a hurry. They, they will get in their feelings in a hurry. So you have to you have to teach them. And once you're teaching them and they're learning it, you can chew them out. But then at the same point, you got to turn around. You got to hug them. And you got to pat them on the butt of the head and say, now you know you're my guy. Right. Make me look good. And then they love that. So you're all sure. right. So you're gentle and love them like Saban did you. Saban never loved God. <laughs> I was a 21 day holdout, so I missed all the training camp. But there was no love, yeah. there was no hugs, there was no nothing except you better get it done. You <laughs> better. Good boy. Let's get Jim Bob back in this. When you made that move from quarterback to defensive side, you probably have played snaps on that side of the ball. But still, what was the toughest part to learn and to adjust to as a defensive back full time? Well, well, I tell you, Chris, and, and just you know, backing up to playing in today's game, I look at it a little differently than my friends Jeremiah and Antonio and these guys that like to go after that ball and intercept those passes. You know, I wasn't real interested in that so much as hitting that guy, right? So the way I look at it is, I would have probably played half the number of plays because I would have got ejected 
You know, and then you sit out the next half of the next game, and the right. next half of the next game. So I probably would have less wear and tear on my body in today's game. But, but going back to the quarterback thing, quite honestly, I only play, only played quarterback in high school for a year. Okay. So I played some running backs, some defensive backs, some tight end. I played quarterback on a really good team that won the state championship in downtown Athens, Georgia, against the team that had Buck Blue was the Georgia quarterback back in those days uh, from Valdosta, and we beat those guys in Athens uh, during my senior season. So, so quite honestly, when I came to Alabama as a quarterback, it was going to be fun, maybe. Right. Uh, but when Coach Bryan asked me to uh, to make the move, I, I didn't I didn't hesitate at all because, quite honestly, I was more familiar and quite a bit better uh, right. on the defensive side of the ball. So I, it was uh, no problem for me. Where, what's you got to ask? You got. He said you got to ask. You, are you saying, Murray, you didn't get asked about that? No, I didn't get asked. We got through with winter workouts, and it was the first day of spring training. And outside the locker rooms, they had a big bulletin board, and I was still in the freshman locker room, and they would put the depth chart up there. So I go in there thinking that I'm on offense. So I start with the last team at quarterback and I work my way up, I'm not there. I said, they moved me to running back. <laughs> so I go to running back. I look at both positions because it was a wishbone to running sure. back. I'm not there. I look at the receiver. I'm not there. I said, I don't think they want me here. They had me here. <laughs> so I start on defense and I start at cornerback. I started free safety and I get strong safety and I start at the last team and I work up and there's my name on the first team. And there's Bob Bumhauer, Charlie Hanna, and Gus White, Colenzo Hubbard. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, and all of a sudden this voice behind me goes, Hey, you like that little buddy? <laughs> and I, I turned around and it was Coach Oliver. And I went, Is this right? And he goes, That's what happens when you work hard. And, I, you know, I thought it was just a joke, but, you know, I, I'm going to tell you what, they never told me, but it couldn't have worked out any better. I was, I was pretty jacked up. I, I agree. Uh, is there is there disappointment, Ricky, initially when you see that? I mean, everybody, I guess, has, you know, the, the feel I'm going to be the, I'm going to be Stabler, I'm going to be Namath, I'm going to be the guy. Yeah, there was, there was disappointment. But, you know, you had the freshman team, and we got, I got to run three snaps my freshman year uh, in a game at quarterback. We played at Tennessee. We had the ball, and Coach Grisco, who was a freshman coach back then, he had told me, the five or six quarterbacks that were freshmen on our freshman team, he had told us all um, a whole off season uh, leading up, you know, uh, to the uh, to our practice and everything, uh, the summer summer practice and thing. We all got to run some snaps in practice and stuff like that. And he said everybody would get everybody get an opportunity to play quarterback in a game. And so uh, about the third preseason or the third freshman game, we're playing up at Tennessee in Bayland Stadium. And there were probably 30 people in the stands because this was like on a Thursday afternoon and uh, <laughs> freshman games weren't highly attended. So um, about the third quarter, we have the ball. We get the ball on about the four-yard line going out. And uh, Coach Grisco turns and looks at me and says, Ricky Davis, you're in there at quarterback. Oh, okay, all right, here's my chance on the three-yard line coming out. You know. <laughs> so we're running the wishbone, and there was, there was the read on the, the triple option or they would call just the automatic handball to the fullback on and off. So the first play is automatic handoff to the fullback on the right side, picks up one yard. Second play, automatic handoff to the fullback on the left side, picks up another yard. So it's third and eight, and I think, well, maybe I'll get a chance to throw the ball here. Next play, automatic handoff to the fullback on the right side. So my three plays at quarterback, my whole college career, um, Picked up, I think, three yards. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I kind of figured out at that point, my days at quarterback at Alabama, they, they just weren't going to happen. Rick, you're an attorney, right? It's all how you present your case. You never had one pass broken up. That's right. Yeah. You never had one <laughs> pass intercepted. But you know what? It didn't matter. What my, I never got to present my case. And, okay. Uh, I'm talking about in history. Uh, you, know, with four. Yeah. you don't have to tell them all that well, story. I'm going to be honest with people. You know, just be honest. But, uh, 
looking back on it, it was the best thing for me to play to play defense because running the wishbone. We had, I mean, Gary Rutledge, Richard Todd came in the year after me. Um, had it, you know, after my sophomore year when I didn't play very much, but I started my junior and senior years. And uh, back then, like I said, there, people didn't throw the ball very much. And so at free safety, one of my jobs at free safety was run support inside out when people were running the wishbone. And so that meant, you know, I would take fullback breaks up through the middle and untouched. And I remember tackling Johnny Davis in practice. And if you know Johnny Davis, Johnny Davis is about 6'3", 2'3". Big Johnny Davis. Big Johnny Davis, and here I am, you know, maybe 6'1", 175 pounds, and that's not fair. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but I was a sure tackler, could make tackles, and, you know. Uh, but again, I get back to Coach Oliver, the guys that know Coach Oliver, and he was just a, um, I was, pre and had the opportunity to play, I would, would not have been an NFL quarterback. I didn't have a, a long career, but for four years I hung on in the NFL because of Coach Oliver and the fundamentals and the techniques that I learned from him. Bobby, i got to ask you, besides playing in an incredible time, champion, national championship teams, phenomenal players, and a great player yourself, you went on, you coached the game for a long time. What were you, what stands out most to you at the end of your coaching career that you learned from back when you were a player? Because I know there are things about the game that change, but there are some elements that you were taught as a player that they're still teaching today as they're going through camp, getting ready for preseason. So what's the number one thing maybe that stands out that has not changed in the least about the game itself? Fundamentals. Fundamentals, that's what you coach every day. You gotta coach fundamentals. And all these schemes don't don't make a lot of difference. Right. But you gotta teach kids fundamentals. I was telling somebody the other day that I was I love teaching fundamentals and I love showing guys how to do it. As soon as I got to the point in coaching where I couldn't demonstrate, I was ready to get out. <laughs> that's a bad feeling when you can't show a kid how to, how to play the game. But fundamentals is, was a big, big thing for me. I just had one pop in my head. I got to run through real quick with all y'all. And I don't know how much time I got, so y'all tell me when to shut up and leave. I'm married. I'm used to being told to shut up. <laughs> and I'm divorced once, so I've been told to leave, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have said that. I <laughs> just thought of that one. You better believe I'm going to use it again. <laughs> Along similar lines, Worst butt chewing you ever took God. from Coach Bryant? I, I, I never got one. You never got one? No, never did. Good night. No, that's pretty good. Mm. That's real good. That's really good. I never got one from Coach Bryant. Got one from Dude Hennessy one time. Tell me about, tell about that, because I like to hear that, having known Dude a little bit. Well, I, it was at practice, and uh, we had a run come my way, and I came up, and the back looked like he was going inside the blocker. So I went inside the blocker, got pinned to the inside, and the guy took it to the outside. Well, I was wrong. I, it happens again during the same scrimmage. I go up, I stay to the outside this time, and ball carry comes. We've got a big gap now because I don't stay to the outside. So I come up inside, I mean outside, and they come inside. So anyway, it makes a long story short. Dude grabs me. Now, dude's a short guy. And he's up here shaking me. John, you've got responsibility outside. Why can't you stay outside? I said, Coach, I went inside one time, and you chewed me out. And I said, Go outside one time, and you chewed me out. And he got mad. He got real mad. And he says, you see me after practice. So I worried the rest of practice about what he's going to do at the end of practice. I think something bad is fixing to happen to me. So I go see him after practice like he had said. And he said, John, he says, uh, you got to cut that stuff out. You can't let that happen again. That's just going to happen. So I'm saying, that's it? <laughs> he said, yeah, get off the field. So that was that was a 
big deal with me because I, I thought I'd really done something wrong and I was going to pay the consequences. And dude was, he was worse. He had a bad bark. No. Bad, who got the worst? I, I know for the rest of y'all, because Coach John's got the tough one, because he had to answer it first. And he said, oh, yeah, another good guy. He didn't get in trouble. I know where they got in trouble. Yeah, only Coach Oliver got me one day at practice uh, for kind of something like that. But it was one of those things where, and coaches aren't supposed to do this now. I don't know if they do or not. I've been to practices. But the tone of practice with Coach Bryant was a lot different, Chris, if you've been to practices in Tuscaloosa the way they are now. I mean, it's pretty vocal. And sure. They, and, uh, but probably the roughest, never Coach Bryant. I never never saw, I mean, Coach Bryant was always, when I would see, when he would go and get on to somebody, it was up, he was in their face. Right. And he wasn't yelling and screaming. And uh, and I had that Coach Oliver came up to me one day after, during the play, and I, you know, I either missed a tackle or I can't even remember now what it was. But he came up to me and he grabbed me by my face mask. And you can't do that anymore, I don't think. Uh, but he pulled me right up into his face. And he was really excited. And there was a lot of <laughs> liquid in his mouth. And he's yelling at me and all this stuff is coming through my face. <laughs> yeah, and it, it really got my attention. So yeah. I, you know, <laughs> but he was 